Well, it's time now for our edition of Live on Live this Thursday. And it is an interesting day indeed, because on March 29th, 2019, that's this day exactly one year's time, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland will leave the European Union. Now, this will be followed by a 21-month transition period that will come to, that will come to an end on the 31st of December of 2020. Now, over the next 365 days, outstanding issues regarding Brexit are going to be bubbling to the surface, not least the idea of re remaining either within or without the customs union. Now, today I'm joined by Raffaella Kitson Pantano, who's the head of communications with the UK's Liberal Democrats Party here in France and also works for a global insurance company. Uh, Raffaella, it's great to have you on the programme again. Thank you for having me. So look, let's just start with Brexit. We've got so much to talk about, so little time. We've got one year to go. What lies ahead? What are the pitfalls? I mean, I've mentioned it there in the lead. Customs Union. <laughs> the, is that um, the biggest clangor? No, it's not. The biggest clangor is going to be um, the frontier in um, Ireland, which of course is linked to the Customs Union. Um, and the biggest issue is going to be, are they going to be able to ratify an exit deal between the UK and the EU within a year? Because if they don't, then the transition period that um, people have been discussing with a lot of excitement will actually not take place. Mm. Um, so it's really dependent on the UK and the EU signing this exit deal. And that will depend very much on them um, finding a solution with regards to the Irish border. And indeed, the fire is under their backside here because they have to have everything hammered out and written down in black and white by this October. Yes. That's the real kind of like deadline for them. It's like, right, there it is on the table. Absolutely. And then the EU goes away and kind of goes, pens through exactly. it. So what happens if it's thrown back in the UK's face? <laughs> Um, well, it depends um, who for. It's mm. going to be a, a big issue um, for the UK mainly because they've got a lot to lose. Um, and in terms of uh, continuity of business for a lot of businesses, this is going to be a big issue. A lot of businesses have been preparing um, for Brexit and potentially for hard Brexit. Um, now with this transition period, it hasn't all come with a lot of excitement because a lot of people have said, well, how much can we count on it? Um, and so if it all backfires, um, yeah, we really don't know what's going to happen. Now, let's take Brexit as a given. Let's just say on the, the, 30, or the 29th of March next year, it's going ahead. There'll be the transition period. But how would you kind of, let's just say, wearing your Lib Dems hat, which, and just to remind our listeners, the Lib Dems are really the only um, major political anti-Brexit, pro-European party functioning in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you sell the idea that staying within the customs union will protect, say, the UK economy and would resolve the EU-UK border issue, which is, of course, Northern Ireland? Well, actually, you, you sell it better and better with the more time we get. Um, the the Transition period is a blessing for us because it gives us time to show the people what a disaster Brexit is from an economic perspective. I mean, since the last time I came to see you, we've seen a number of businesses leave Britain. We've seen the European uh, Medicines Agency move out um, with 350 jobs being um, cancelled. We have the aeronautics business moving out. We have the insurance business um, moving out as well. So the more time... Britain takes to settle a deal with the EU, the more the Liberal Democrats have time to show that actually the economy is crashing. But to finalise just on this, this, this point about the customs union, you know, the Tories who are in power and they're in with the DUP, the Northern Irish mm -hmm. um, Unionists, uh, in, a, in, a, in a minority government, basically, essentially, that's cobbled together. If the UK were to remain in the customs union, especially for the Tory party, what was the whole point of Brexit in the first place? Oh, <laughs> exactly. I, I, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that question. I'd like to to ask you what would be the whole point of Brexit in the first place? Because basically, Absolutely. it's just kind of they've, they've ripped the whole thing apart and now they're going to stick it, glue it back together exactly, again. Exactly, exactly. So there was no point. So now you mentioned there, and this is also um, uh, your domain, uh, you mentioned on insurance. Yeah. And, um, you know, this is 28 states, Europe. We we have various insurance companies, high competition here, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. um, you can't do anything. You can't move really across Europe without having insurance of some, yeah. some description or another, be it for your health, yeah. be it for or getting a mortgage, yeah. be it for your it, car. be it for even taking your kid out of school for Absolutely. a school trip. Everything is insured, insured, insured. Yeah. 
which you know some people i suppose in america would be complaining about this and well it should be our our right not to have insurance you know <laughs> but here in europe it is very much part of daily life yeah. now that the uk is pulling out of the european mm-hmm. union what is the impact for insurers here which usually have a europe wide scheme the the what allows insurers to do business across the border is freedom of services, which enables you to service a, a client or a policyholder without being in their country, mm. or freedom of establishment, which enables you to settle um, a, a branch or a subsidiary in that country. Now, the day the UK leaves the EU, if they don't manage to have a settlement with the EU, which is the worst case scenario, which is hard Brexit, then those rules and regulations will fall. And so what's happening right now is the people PRA, the Prudential Regulatory Authority, is asking insurers to apply to um, submit applications to have a third country branch so that they can continue doing business in the UK. Yes. Now, what was very interesting and what's very exciting is that the deadline for submitting these um, third country branch applications was today. And yesterday, the Bank of England wrote to us to say, actually, do you know what? We are giving you the insurance that um, even if a uh, transition period does not go through because a political deal will, will fall, exactly. we will let you have a special regime so that you can have continuity of business. So you are now saying that the Bank of England is underwriting anything that is really coming up post-2020 even? The Bank of England, I, I wouldn't be so <laughs> forceful, but the Bank of England has made it clear to, to banks and insurers yeah. that um, they don't need to submit their application to open third country branches today, that they've got more time and they are trying desperately to give banks and insurers uh, a comfortable environment to give them confidence that they can continue doing business. Because if they don't, and this is what we've been seeing in the, in, in the media, banks and insurers have said, wait a second, the, the political deal of saying we have an insu- um, a transitional period, this is a political deal that can fall through any time. And when you're doing business, you can't rely on it. And so, confidence is everything. And in confidence the, in, is everything. everything. Exactly. It's, especially in the insurance business. Especially in the insurance yeah. business. Mm-hmm. Now, what's interesting as well is that... Um, for, for, for the European companies, they have to set up a third country branch in the UK. But imagine what it is for the UK that needs to set up 27, 27 exactly, third country branches in all of the European countries. Oh, what a so time web. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm saying in terms of, you were talking about time and about the, the Liberal Democrats' stance. The more time we have to show that this is just a mess mm. and, and, and it's a, a complicated web that is going to be very difficult to entangle, the better it is to, to make the argument that we shouldn't be doing Brexit in the first place. Well, on the the, the point of Brexit, this is the reason we're talking today. So is it is it right for me to construe it like this, that the Bank of England has actually kind of said, look, whatever the politicians are doing on the side, we are just going to do it because we don't really have faith in them. Because, I mean, if, if anybody out there who might read The Guardian, there was a litany of 11 things that were said by the Tory government and that have been completely, basically, that are completely that false and that they yeah. reneged upon. Yeah. One of them being that the transition will serve merely to implement the final trade deal, which would be agreed on Brexit Day. Well, you can rip that up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this is, I mean, it's... And it, another it's, one is, and, and, and I'm wearing my Liberal Democrat hat here, mm. is um, the votes for life. Mm. Um, you'll remember I, I told you that um, today the British um, residents who are not in the UK cannot vote if they've been out of the country for more than 15 years. And so the Liberal Democrats in France have been fighting to give the right um, to vote for life to, to British people all over the world. Now, the Cabinet Office has recently said, OK, fine, we're going to work towards that. But as you rightly say, we need to see that it's more than just words. Indeed. Now, also, just kind of on the issue of, of Brexit and the kind of on, on the home and the effect it's having, we're running out of time. But very quickly, you know, we have Tony Blair coming out. We've got Lib Dems coming out saying, well, look, we would like to have a vote on the actual final Brexit deal, if you wouldn't mind. But is there an appetite for another referendum altogether in the UK? I think it's very important that if we do have a deal that the British citizens can vote on it because um, what they voted for in the first referendum, they didn't really know what they were um, saying yes or no to. So it's important we have a referendum on the deal. Whether or not we'll have a referendum altogether on should we do Brexit or not, um, a few months ago I would have said it's out of the question. To be honest, we now have a 21-month transition period, so who can tell? It might happen. Anything might happen. Well, look, indeed, we've got 365 days 
days to find out what might happen up until the official Brexit, then another 20 months month, after, 21 yeah. months after, up until the 31st of December 2020. 2020. Time flies and it goes fast. What is it, two and a half years is a long time in politics. <laughs> Anyhow, my thanks there to Raffaella Kitson Pantano from the Paris chapter here of the Lib Democrats. Thank you very much for being on the programme today. Thanks a lot. See you soon.